Hi, I'm Rob D from Property Hub with Rob B, and today we're talking deals. Absolutely. But you know, you should be turning down more deals than you accept. I know it sounds crazy, but there are loads of reasons why you should walk away from a deal, and we're going to give you that list now. We're really able to pass our experience on with this video because with Property Hub Invest, one of our companies, we assess hundreds of deals every single year. Yes, you heard correctly, hundreds of deals. Because of where we are in the marketplace, we get lots of deals sent to us, but the vast majority get turned down. Well, why? Well, here are the reasons. The first reason, and probably the easiest one to understand, is that it's just overpriced. Yeah, you'd be amazed by the proportion of deals that we see that are overpriced, either because the developer or seller thinks they can get investors to pay too much because they're lacking in local knowledge, or they just need to hit a certain price point to make their numbers work, and so they are holding out for a number that's unrealistic. Luckily, because we've got so much experience in doing this and we operate in areas that we know really well, it's very, very quick to take a look at a deal and in a matter of minutes, find out if the price is in the ballpark of where it should be. Of course, even if the price is round about where it should be, we'll always try to negotiate and get that price down as low as we can. But sometimes it's so far away, it's not even worth a conversation and we just have to turn the deal down. Another reason we turn a deal down, or in particular an off-plan deal, is if the deposit's too high. Now, a low deposit gives you real advantages as a property investor. And to understand that, make sure you check out our free course on buying off-plan. You can find a link to that course in the description below. But the other reason why you don't want to put more than 10% down as a deposit if you're buying off plan is because you want to make sure your funds are protected. And if you go above a 10% deposit, it's hard to do that. Now, there are plenty of deals out there where they ask you to put 25% down, 30%, 40 sometimes even 50% down up front. And they will tell you that your deposit's protected. But in the vast majority of cases, it really isn't. And an independent solicitor will be able to guide you through that and explain to you why you're not protected. The other reason why you don't want to do that is you're effectively funding their build. That's not great. That's a great deal for the developer, but it's not a great deal for you. So if it's got a bad deal structure and the deposit's too high, we're not interested. Another reason we turn down off-plan deals specifically is if they come from a developer with either no track record or a bad track record. We say it time and time again, people perceive buying off plan as being risky, but it's only risky if your deposit isn't protected, which Rob's just talked about, and if you're working with a developer who doesn't deliver. You'd be amazed by some of the things you could find if you just Google the name of the developer and you can find some of the things that have gone wrong for them in the past. But it's not always so easy because company names change and ownership changes. So using our knowledge, we're often able to find history that they'd rather stayed hidden. But there can also be risk around working with brand new developers who don't have a track record at all. We will do it, but we'll only do it after doing a lot of digging into the background of the people involved and what projects they've individually been involved in in the past. If we can't get confident in the track record one way or the other, then it's a risk that's just not worth taking however good the deal appears to be, so we just have to walk away. Another reason we'd walk away is if there's issues with the ground rent. So whether you're buying new or second hand, you always want to check out the ground rent because it may cause you issues when it comes to getting a mortgage. Now the criteria around ground rent and what is acceptable to lenders and what isn't is changing all the time. So you want to work with a mortgage broker that really understands property investment and really understands this issue. Don't let it put you off, but make sure you check it out. But do get put off if you see a house that is a leasehold, because that will put off buyers and it will put off mortgage companies. And there are plenty of houses out there that are freehold, and most of them should be. So do avoid leasehold houses. Of course, with apartments, you expect them to be leasehold. But with houses, it's a big no-no. Another reason we'd walk away is a really obvious one. Nothing to do with the developer, nothing to do with the deal structure, but to do with the area. The area just doesn't have the fundamentals you'd want as an investor. This is less often the case with new build developments because they tend to be built centrally in areas that do have the fundamentals, but not necessarily, so you still have to watch out for it. But with existing stock, we do get offered deals in areas that just do not have the transport links or the employment opportunities or the general facilities that you'd want to see as an investor. Well, for a start, it makes it more difficult than it needs to be to attract tenants, which of course puts the profitability of your investment at risk. But also, it means that prices in that area are less likely to rise as the property cycle matures, which means the growth of your development isn't going to be as good as it could be either. So there's no point buying in even the best area if you're paying too much. But if the area isn't right for investment, then it's not right at any price. 
If you're looking at a new build property or off plan, another reason to turn down a deal is if it's investment led. What we mean by that is that if you look for that property on the internet, you can find lots of people marketing it and they are marketing it directly to investors. So the adverts will often talk about yields and why it makes a strong investment case. They are not talking to owner occupiers. That would worry us and that would rule the deal out for us. There's two main reasons for that. The first is you'd like to see a mix in any development of owner occupiers and investors. There's nothing wrong with having investors in a development and in city centres sometimes even a majority of the properties being sold to investors. But you don't want it marketed to just investors. You want to see owner occupiers in there. The second reason is mortgage companies will frown upon it. If they see property being marketed aggressively to property investors directly, they will deem the scheme investor led and will cease to lend on it. And that could hurt your investment, not just when you purchase it, because you have to buy cash, but also if you try and remortgage in the future, or even worse, you try and sell it, and the buyer, even if it's an owner occupier, might not be able to get a mortgage. So be careful of schemes and developments that are advertised quite heavily on the internet. And let's face it, if you have to push a deal that hard through marketing, it's probably not a great deal in the first place. Right, there you have it. You've now got a long list of why you should walk away from a deal. And make sure you write them down because we do not want you making a costly mistake. And don't make the mistake of failing to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon while you're there.